All right, um, this is my Mildly Anima EDH Commander deck, and Mild is my general, flower power general, and if you don't know what she does, uh, you look at the, you pay six mana, she costs three to come out, red, green, white, and you pay six, and you look at the top five cards of your library, and if they're power five or greater, you can put them on the battlefield. One creature from the power five, and then you put the rest on the bottom. So sometimes she fizzles. She doesn't always hit a power five or greater creature. But that's why you have a lot in your deck, because you don't want her to fizzle. You want her to hit. So we'll start off with the easy stuff. Now, she's a cheap general, so you're going to get her out fairly often. And when you get her out, you want to protect her. So how I protect her is... There's a citizen, and a citizen is a five mana cost and gives all your creatures hexproof, pretty much, and you can also regenerate them. Then, past the citizen, there's aspect of the mongoose. Aspect of the mongoose is like canopy cover. It basically gives your creatures hexproof, but the thing about it is when the creature dies or goes to the graveyard, then aspect of the mongoose returns to your hand. So, I like that. And then, which I think is essential for any commander deck, Lightning Greaves and Swift Foot Boots. They are both pretty much the same thing, except Lightning Greaves has zero cost to equip and Swift Foot Boots has a one cost. But Lightning Greaves is Shroud and Swift Foot Boots is Hexproof. Hexproof is obviously better than Shroud. And that's how you, that's pretty much how I protect my up. Then, I've got destruction cards, is what I call them, and the type of cards that I need to get rid of stuff. So, you got Aura Shards, which is awesome, three mana to drop, and whenever a creature comes in the battlefield, you can destroy Artifact or Enchantment. As soon as that one comes out, it doesn't last very long, usually people get it. Then you got Day of Judgment, Japanese one here, gotta have one, Day of Judgment. And then Oblivion Ring. If you're playing white, you gotta play Oblivion Ring. Same thing with Path to Exile. If you're playing white, you gotta play Path to Exile. Then Croson Grit. Almost the same thing with green. If you're playing green, you should probably play Croson Grit. Split second, can't be really countered. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. And then, because this is mild and we have big creatures, I like to play War Storm Surge. Whenever creatures enter the battlefield, it deals damage equal to the power to target creature or player. So, when you have creatures coming in with power 5 or greater, they're doing quite a bit of damage. Then, the next part of the deck I want to get into is Mana Ramp. Mana Ramp is very essential, because these creatures are big. So, we'll start off with one of the best Mana Ramp guys, Garrick Wildspeaker. And, you know, untap two target lands is usually what you're going to do with them, but in a pinch, the creature just... The overrun ability, creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and trample, will win you a game. Then, of course, we have Mana Reflection. I mean, you're playing green, so six mana. Let's double our mana. Why not? Then we have Azusa. A lot of people are a little iffy on playing her, but I just love her because she combos out with Oracle Mandaya pretty good. If you got a top in play, you can set the lands on top and just... I think uh, two turns in a row I dropped three lands and pretty much gave me board advantage. Then I played Dark Soul Ignite because it's nice to have it any color. Um, there's this Cultivate and then that other card that's the same as Cultivate. I just played Cultivate because I got this nice FNM one. Then you got Mirage's Wake. Baby mana reflection, but it does give my creatures plus one plus one, which has come in handy more than once. And of course, Soul Ring. And then finally, you have my elder. Or you have my elder. And uh, if you don't know what he does, uh, when he goes to the graveyard, you can search for two basic land cards. And the thing about him is you can sacrifice him, you pay two to sacrifice him. And you get two basic land cards that go in your hand. And uh, also, you also get to draw a card. So. It's a lot to do for five mana. I think it's worth 
two lanes and drawing a card. Then after that, let's go ahead and get into some creature fighting. What you want to do is find creatures. Now I'm going to save one card for last here. You always want to find creatures. So you got Defense of the Heart, which is awesome. Uh, if they got three or more creatures, because a lot of times they'll hate on you with Mile because you're so aggressive and they don't want to see these big creatures they play. But uh, what the Defense of the Heart does, if they got three or more creatures, you can sacrifice this, search your deck for two big guys, and put them right into play. Then you got Deadwood Tree Folk. If uh, if you draw them early, just put them back, or if you if you draw them in your opening hand, just put them back when you're mulligan or whatever. Uh, this guy you definitely want late, but you get a creature when he comes in, then when he dies you get another creature back to your hand from the graveyard. You can't really hate on that. Then I got Elvish Piper. I was running Quicksilver Amulet, but I was cheating too, like I had too much cheat and not enough creatures, so I dropped Quicksilver Amulet in favor of another creature, and uh, I'm just running Elvish Piper. Because Elvish Piper, you drop, and you only pay one green, and you drop that creature on the battlefield. Pretty good. Then you got Green Sun Zenith. Um, nine times out of ten, I'm running Green Sun Zenith to get a mana ramp guy like Oracle Monty or Azusa or Primetime. I mean, but there's a reason this card got banned in so many formats. It's amazing. <laughs> then you got Prime Command, which basically lets you search for another creature again. And half the time, you're gaining seven life. And now this one, you either gain seven life or you take somebody's non creature permanent and put it on the battlefield or put it in the top of the library, which is. That's pretty lame. I mean, I guess it could be useful. But you really, what you're going to do with this is search the library for a creature card and probably gain seven life. And then finally, the king of cheating creatures in play, Wild Pair. Um, Wild Pair, the, the deck's built around Wild Pair. That's why I saved that one for last. Um, when you play Wild Pair, once you play a creature, uh, they have to have the same, another creature with the same, you can put another creature in play that has the same total power and toughness. So if a creature is 5-5 five, five, or 6-6, six, six, then its total power and toughness for a 6-6 six, six is 12. So you got to find another creature, you get to go look through your deck, find another creature that's power and toughness 6-6, six, six, which, is, which is equal to 12, and you put that one into play. So let's show you how that works. The main, the main focus is the 6-6 six, six guys. So, with the six guys, six six guys, of course, I got prime time, and he's a beast. You know, gives me all the lands I need. And if he comes in, I get to and swing on the ones. I got four lands. I don't care if anybody kills him. I got four lands out of him. And then I got a chroma. Sometimes I'll morph her in. Very rarely though, but usually when she hits, she's a pretty big threat. You gotta have flyers in the deck. So let's go ahead and stick with some of the flyers. Wind Brisk Raptor. I just like, personally, I like to gain life. So that's why I stick things like Wind Brisk Raptor in there. He gave me a whole bunch of life one time, like 90. Then I have Bellfire Dragon. Bellfire Dragon is awesome. I killed 45 6 6 tokens once with Bellfire Dragon. Then Rift the Awakener. Oh, Rift the Awakener. Um, I really haven't got much out of him, but I like him. <laughs> He's flying too. You gotta, the key, like, one of the keys to the deck is you gotta find the flying guys. Um, a lot of decks run flying, and a lot of these big guys aren't flying, so you gotta that have power five at least. So you gotta be able to find some flying guys to fit into the deck. Then I run Sun Titan. Now Sun Titan's awesome with Wild Pair. Because I can bring back something that's mana three or less, like say Azusa. Let's find Azusa. And her power and toughness is equal to three, which is the same. As Jean Milder. So, say Jean Milder is my dick. So I drop Sun Titan. Or I drop. Whoever I drop out of these guys, usually I'm going to go after Sun Titan. I drop Bellfire Dragon, and I have Wild Pillar out. Then I'm going to search my deck, find Sun Titan. Sun Titan drops, you can pull three. So Zeus is probably dead because I got her early. I pull Zeus from the graveyard, or Yavimaya is dead because I sacrificed it. I pull Yavimaya from the graveyard, search my deck for Azusa, bam. 
get four creatures in one play. Then my final 6-6 six, six guy is Vigor. And Vigor is just a great card. It protects all your other creatures, and they get plus one, plus one counters. Can't hit on that. And he shuffles back in your library, which I like. Alright, and then I have my 5-5 five, five guys. Now there's Spearbreaker Baymoth. He's indestructible, and he makes other guys indestructible. That's awesome. Can't really hate on that. <laughs> when he comes out, it becomes a pain. Then you got Bane Slayer Angel. Once again, I like the game life. And she's flying in first strike, so I like her a lot. <laughs> then you have Red Dog Ringer. Now, she's a lot of mana. And she doesn't have power five toughness. But at the beginning of your upkeep, you return target creature card from graveyard to play. And putting creatures from this deck into play is what this deck is all about. So that's why I play her. Then you have Avenger of Zendikar. She's a, he's a 5-5. Five five, but what he does is you put a green plant into play for each land you control. Which is probably going to be a whole lot of lands. With a whole lot of plants. And every time you drop a land, the, land gets, the plants get plus one, plus one counters. So it's going to be nice. And then here's a combo piece. Moss Bitch Tool. Moss Bitch Troll combos with Miles Aria. Miles Aria. Now, Miles Aria has a few things to it. But uh, basically, what you want to do there is have a threat to win the game. And if you, with Moss Bitch Troll, you can tap any number of untapped creatures with total power 10 or greater. So you got to tap. Enough creatures to equal 10, which is not going to be hard. There might probably be two creatures in this deck. And you tap those, and then Monster Bridge Patrol gets plus 20, plus 20 until end of turn. Well, the final line on Miles Rhea is, 